All righty. Well, welcome everybody to another episode of Sales Pipeline Radio. My name is Matt Hines. I'm your host. Excited to have you here. If you are here right now live, as it is 90 degrees here in Seattle in our houses that have no air conditioning, but hey, we deal with it every once in a while because we get some sun and not rain. Thank you for watching us live. If you are watching this on LinkedIn, you can be part of the show. If you make a comment on our conversation today, if you ask a question of our guest, uh, we can make you part of the show. We'll introduce you uh, in, put you on, put your comment or question on screen and would love to do so. So thank you very much for making us part of your workday today. Uh, if you are listening or watching on demand, thank you very much for downloading and subscribing uh, to our uh, Sales Pipeline Radio episodes. Every episode of Sales Pipeline Radio, past, present, future, always available at salespipelineradio.com. Uh, every week we're featuring some of the best and brightest minds in uh, sales and marketing, specifically in B2B. Today is absolutely no different. Very excited to have with us Paul Riley, uh, a multi-time uh, author, number one best-selling author of multiple books around sales, value-added selling, and the more recent book, Selling, highly relevant right now, <laughs> Selling Through Tough Times. Uh, yes. Paul, thanks so much for joining us. Matt, it is a privilege. And, you know, the only thing hotter than Seattle today is going to be the messaging our interview today. So let's make it happen, man. Thanks oh my for having goodness. Me Listen to that. We're just we're just going, we're coming in hot. All right. So um for those that don't know you, and I know we've yeah. got a mixed audience here, marketing sales folks, uh, for those that haven't read some of your books in the past, a little bit of a little bit of your background um and sort of what you do. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I'm a salesperson at heart. I mean my first my first job was a sales job. Um, my first professional job, we'll call it, was selling propane for a company called Feral Gas. I'm selling in the B2B space here for indus industrial use. Um, interesting profession because I am selling literally the same product as the two dozen competitors um, that are out there selling as well. So very challenging environment. I also sold uh, during that time frame when King of the Hill was at its height of popularity, that show where Hank mm -hmm. Hill sold propane. Mm -hmm. So I was Hank Hill, uh, loved that sales job, great company to work for. From there, I went to go work with Hilti, selling tools and fasteners in the construction industry. Hilti is a premium name. They are a premium brand. So I was selling a product that was sometimes 20, 30, even 50% higher than the competition. So I had to learn how to compete on value. And then I uh, sold medical equipment for a few years before I got into the speaking and training business. Um, and, and the one commonality between all of those different industries was that customers want value. Uh, they want value. So that was that was how I got started in sales. And then today what I do is I travel the globe helping sales organizations compete more profitably by selling on value and not price. And I do that through training seminars, keynote presentations, and consulting as well. So that's what I do. Love it. Well, I can't remember where I came about you in, in years past, certainly read value added selling a great book. You host a great uh, podcast of your own Q and a sales. Um, mm -hmm. And I found this new book particularly relevant uh, right now. I mean, it's that you get all kinds of mixed messages in the market this year, right? You got some yeah. companies doing layoffs, you got inflation, then we're in a bull market. We're in a bear market. We're back to a bull market. <laughs> who knows what's happening. What I do know, having talked to a lot of our clients and people in my network, as well as sort of as we grow in our business and sell is that this has been a very interesting year. Demand is still there. Mm -hmm. Interest is still there. Getting commitment and closing has been a challenge for a lot of companies this year. And I know you're seeing some of that as well. So talk a little bit about the conditions. I want to get into the idea of mental yeah. resilience and some of the stuff that's in the new book, but talk about the conditions you're seeing in the market today. What's real? Yeah, so certainly all the factors that you just mentioned, um, the big one as of recently that we are technically in a recession, right? With two consecutive quarters of negative GDP, that that mm -hmm. puts us into a recession. So what I'm seeing is buyers in general are starting to become a little more hesitant. They're, mm -hmm. they're pumping the brakes a little bit. They want to see what this recession um, feels like if it's a short one, if it's a long one. Um, so I see that we still see supply chain constraints across the board. Labor shortages are still there. Inflation, rising interest rates. So there's a lot of uncertainty. If we could, if we could just lump everything into that one factor, uncertainty. Um, and a few things happen uh, when there's uncertainty. Buyers they pump the brakes. They start to focus more on cost cutting measures as well, and <laughs> they're filled with fear and anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. They may not vocalize it, but that's certainly part of, of how they think. Um, so I see all those factors, but the good news is, Matt, they're, <laughs> I, I can't think of a better profession to handle uncertainty than salespeople, right? Yeah. We face it all the time. It, nothing is guaranteed. Same with marketers, right? Nothing is guaranteed. We, we really have to operate in the market 
in whatever the environment is and figure out a way to make things happen. Well, in, in the best of markets, people stop buying. In the best of markets, people decide not to buy a few. And in the worst of markets, people still buy. People still are trying to, every one of us is trying to find a way to continue to move forward. And that in many cases includes investing in and committing to certain solutions and outcomes. Right. So how does, as a seller, from a message, from an approach standpoint, I mean, you know, you've been through like, you know, we've all been through 2008, 2020. We've seen sort of economic conditions sort of shift and challenge the selling mm -hmm. environment. What are things you're seeing successful, resilient sellers do right now? Um, first things first, they mentally prepare themselves every day to go out there and, and do their best, focus on what they can control. Um, you know, that was one thing that, that I felt was extremely important in this book is to highlight the mental aspect of, of what it means to be in sales. You know, there are plenty of self-help books out there. There are plenty of books out there focusing on resilience, some great books that I absolutely love. But what makes this unique is that it's written from the, the perspective of a salesperson, right? Mm -hmm. In what we uniquely face, we could do everything right on a sales call and still they don't buy. We have to, we have to face that uncertainty every day. And so, you know, in the book, we talk a lot about ways that we can build mental resilience and techniques. And we call it positive mental programming. That's, mm -hmm. that's really what it is all about mm -hmm. is, is programming yourself every single day to go out there, focus on what you can control, focusing more on progress than performance. Right. And I know that is, that, that's a, that can be a sticky situation, a tough conversation, especially with sales leaders. But let's face it, during tough times, there's going to be a drop off in business activity. Mm -hmm. And so during tough times, we need to focus more on the progress that we're making purely than, than just performance. I'm not saying we throw out performance metrics and all that. No, but we need to focus on just making that progress. Talking today on Sales Pipeline Radio with Paul Riley. He's the author of the new book, Selling Through Tough Times, and this idea of mental resilience. I mean, it's really important now, but again, even in the best of selling conditions, the vast majority of your prospects end up saying no, right? right. When you think about prospects to opportunities to close deals, this is a sales funnel, not a sales cylinder, right? And so <laughs> there's resilience just in the all of those no's you get, even in the best of selling conditions. Yes. What are some keys to developing that mental resilience um, in all economic conditions? Absolutely. Um, so I would say one of the first things we can do, number one, develop a positive first response to adversity. Okay. So Matt, let's think about this. Um, I, I believe people fall into three categories when it comes to handling adversity, tough moments. You have people that experience them and they push right through them. It, it's, it doesn't even slow them down. It, it's almost like they generate more momentum. They love the challenge. Now, on the opposite end of that, you've got people who experience adversity and they quickly give up. I mm -hmm. doubt anyone listening to this podcast falls into that category, but here's where most people fall into. It's the third category. They, they face some adversity. They complain about it. They wallow around in self-pity to various degrees. They, 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 they get frustrated and they pause and then they wait it out. And then eventually they push through. Mm -hmm. and, and my thought is, okay, if you know you're going to push through eventually, why not do it sooner rather than later? So here's, here's the tip on how you can develop that positive first response. And it's very simple. Start with one day. All right. For one day, track all of the adverse things that have happened to you. All right. Begin tracking them. And as you track them, look at your first response. And it could be something simple like, oh, that customer called me and said they're going in a different direction, right? That's a tough time right there. How do you mm -hmm. respond? Do you spend five minutes complaining about it? You know, 20 minutes, whatever it is, track the response. Uh, let's say next thing happens, uh, you know, your shoelace breaks, right? Something stupid, right? But it's mm -hmm. adversity. How do you respond? Do you, do you complain about it? Do you feel sorry for yourself? Whatever it is. And what's going to happen as you track your response to adversity, you are going to begin to self-correct. You're going to notice it, how you respond, and you're not going to like the way you respond, so you will naturally change. So that's that's one thought, right? Developing that positive first response to adversity is key. How you do it is by just tracking your response. Start with a day, then do the next day. Do it for a week, and what you're going to mm -hmm. notice over that week is that you become more resilient. You start to bounce back quicker. And these are habits. I mean, that yeah. you're building over yeah. time, right? I mean, this is in, in this in the benefit of doing this, even whether you're in sales or marketing or accounting, is that these, you know, we all face resilience 
uh, challenges right. in our work and our life. And so I like the idea of sort of building that muscle and that habit with things that are big and small because they all matter in terms of how your brain ultimately responds to s- stimulus and situations around you. Yeah, absolutely. And if I could build on that, Matt, just just for one more thought, um, you know, in the book, um, <laughs> you'll notice I, I use the phrase tough times are good repeatedly. All right. They are good. And and they're good because of the, the positive change that they can generate. Now, part of the, the message in positive mental programming is a technique we call positive reframing. Every single day, negative things happen. Right? It's just a reality of, of participating in this world. But you get to choose how you respond. Um, and one of the the tools we have, we call it the daily mental flex. It's a collection of six exercises to help you develop that mental resilience. And one of the exercises is called positive reframing. Towards the throughout the day or at the end of the day, think of a negative event that has happened. And then what you need to do is ask yourself, okay, what's the positive outcome that that could potentially happen as a result of this? What's a good thing? That will happen. What's what's the silver lining on this cloud? And what you end up doing daily as you build that habit, as you mentioned, you train your brain to almost automatically default to the good things that will happen through the negative events. And, and you think about how much more opportunity you will see as a salesperson, as a marketer, if you choose to view the world in that way. Um, so that positive reframing is is critical uh, as we go through tough times. I've got a couple last questions before we wrap up here. One of them, I think I want to encourage everyone, if you're interested in this topic, want to learn more, obviously I highly recommend the book Selling Through Tough Times. You can find it on Amazon. Check out uh, toughtimer.com, toughtimer.com. You can learn more about the book, get more information uh, from Paul. Could talk a little about the Tough Timer Challenge and this daily mental oh, yeah. flex challenge you have, because I thought that was really cool. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we call it the 30-day Tough Timer Challenge. And the goal is to build your mental strength, right? The, I think the CDC recommends 25 to 30 minutes of physical activity day to build your physical strength. What if we dedicated as much time and effort to building our mental strength? And that's what the Tough Timer Challenge is. It's a collection of six exercises, mental exercises that you will do daily, right? Daily for 30 days, all right? And for 30 days, you're gonna notice some positive changes in your life. You're gonna be more grateful for what you do have. You're going to, you're gonna be able to develop a stronger self-discipline. You're gonna be able to continuously improve every single day. Um, Doing this over 30 days, there's an exponential benefit, um, an exponential benefit that you will, that you will gain just from going through these exercises. And they don't take that long. That's the the beauty. I mean, we're talking 10 to 15 minutes in the morning and maybe another 10 to 15 minutes in the evening. Um, But there are six exercises, expressing gratitude, continuous improvement, self-discipline, positive reframing, um, pruning and planting, which is about removing negativity and then finally reducing friction between your goals. All right. So those are are, are really the six exercises. Um, But I I don't want to discourage anyone from trying it. But Matt, I'll tell you that most people won't do it. Um, they won't do it for 30 days, right? They, they may try and, and that's okay. What I would encourage you to do is at least get started with it and try it for a week. I right? yep. try it for a week and then ask yourself after a week, do I feel like I'm a better person? Am I, am I a better version of myself than I was seven days ago? And if the answer is yes, keep going. Well, on the outcomes and the improvements you make for yourself personally, I mean, I think as a seller, it helps you be more professional, more poised, confidence without ego, and resilient through good times and bad. As a leader, it helps you lead your team and exhibit leadership qualities that other people are going to exhibit. And then last, I I wish I knew about this earlier in my career. I, I As I dig into the book and the models you have, I think about the way I reacted to things in my career and my job stress that was entirely unproductive and probably even had a negative impact. And, you know, the earlier you can develop these skills, I think the better you, you could be in any role that you have. Speaking of that last question I have for you, you know, we've got a mix of sales and marketing professionals that are listening to and watching this show on a weekly basis. This is a book that is in its title about selling. Um, but I, 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 I read this book and I thought it was highly, very important for marketers. What do you think marketing professionals and marketing counterparts of sales can learn or should be learning from this book? Yeah, absolutely. Sales and marketing are, are so linked. Um, you know, I believe that 
selling exists to execute tactically what marketing designs strategically, right? Mm -hmm. So salespeople are out boots on the ground, making it happen, but they rely on marketing and vice versa. Um, this book is chock full of marketing tips and ideas, um, especially around customer messaging. So from, from a marketing standpoint, as we go through tough times, there's a few things that, that we need to control messaging wise. Number one, people become more focused on cost cutting ideas mm -hmm. during tough mm -hmm. times. So from a mm -hmm. marketing perspective, um, I would encourage every marketer listening to go back and take a look at their solution and detail how their solution helps cut cost, overall cost, not price. All right. So keep that distinction there, the difference between price and cost, but also cash flow. Um, especially if you're selling to small businesses uh, mm -hmm. or marketing to small businesses, um, but even big corporations, cash flow is lifeblood for any organization, but especially through tough times. It's, yeah. it's similar to oxygen. Right? Yeah. So if you can impact cash flow with your solution, that's going to be critical. Another piece that becomes so important, and you see a lot of big companies do this in their marketing, um, longevity, certainty, and stability are important in your messaging during tough times. And, and the reason why companies want to partner with other companies that have been through tough times, that have proven themselves, that have gone through a recession and a depression in certain cases. In a recent uh, sales kickoff meeting, salesperson asked, you know, Paul, does, do our customers really care that we've been around for a hundred plus years? I said, right now they do. Right. If you've been through the Great Depression and you've survived that and the, the, the pandemic of the Spanish flu and you've survived that, <laughs> if you've recited multiple recessions, inflations, things like that, it proves that your company is going to be here. And people need that stability. Yeah. Chevy's Like a Rock campaign, which aired in mid-1990s, early 1990s, they knew stability was important, especially at that point in time. They actually launched that campaign in the middle of a recession. And I have to believe part of it was the marketing team thought, okay, people are in a recession right now. They need something that is stable. And that turned out to be one of their most popular ad campaigns. It certainly lasted longer than the recession did. So stability is so important. All right. If, if you are listening to this on demand, I want you to rewind, rewind three to four minutes and listen to what <laughs> Paul just said again, because that was packed with some really important pib messaging pivots, whether you're in sales, whether you're in marketing, your customers are still buying, but the criteria they're using and the messages they hear that are going to get them to commit to change in this moment in tough markets has pivoted. Super important. Paul, thank you so much for joining us on Sales Pipeline Radio today. Uh, obviously, Amazon, um, Tough Timer. Where else can people learn more about you? Yeah, I would say just go to toughtimer.com. And I, I've got a bonus for marketers and sellers. Chapter 14 of this book, which is Crafting Your Customer Message, it's actually Mike Weinberg's favorite chapter. He wrote the forward to the book. I know he's been on your show as well. Mm -hmm. um, you can get it for free. You can download it for free at toughtimer.com. Just go to the go to the book tab at the top of the website, um, and then you just enter your email address, and you'll get that chapter for free, chapter 14. Awesome. Well, thank you, everyone, for watching and listening. We'll be here again next week, Thursday, 1130 Pacific, 230 Eastern. My name is Matt Hines. We'll see you next week. Sales Pipeline Radio. Bye. Oh,